So I've been seeing a while now that Hobby Lobby is now carrying 3D printed filament. Um, I've always wanted a retail store locally that I can go to uh, when I'm in a bind and you know get supplies for 3D printing in general. So I went to the local Hobby Lobby and yeah, sure enough, there it was. There was an end cap and uh, just like I've been seeing all over the internet, um, they were carrying rolls of filament. Uh, they had uh, PLA plastic, they had some ABS, they had some different color like, uh, you know, silk PLA or something like that. But I went ahead and I just purchased a couple rolls of the PLA as I, it's my primary filament that I use. Um, I was figured I figured I can uh, experiment with this filament and see how well it does uh, compared to my preferred filaments that I use. That's my personal preferences like Hatchbox or Bamboo Lab filaments nowadays. Um, and also I'm like, okay, let's do a smaller uh, build, right? And so let's let's compare it and see what happened. Um, I'm going to be using the BD1 droid files from GameBody. I've always wanted this droid. It's from Star Wars Fallen Order game. Uh, and uh, if you guys don't know what it is uh, by the end of this video, I hope you do. And I hope you do plunge into this kind of build because this is going to be awesome. So let's get into this build plus let's see if this filament holds up. So let's talk about the game body files first, okay? Um, I purchased the BD1 Droid files. I think it cost me around twenty dollars. Okay, the, sometimes you have sales and uh, and whatnot. You just have to catch them. But uh, honestly, twenty bucks was was well worth it. Um, everything was detailed to this droid. Now, anybody who doesn't know about this Star Wars droid in the game, it is your utility droid, right? So it it carries your stems. It carries your uh, holograms. Everything about it is compatible, customizable. Um, and just an awesome kind of like I said utility droid. They f gave us the files that uh, mimic that. It's got drawers. It's got panels that come off. There's there's different um, uh, utility things that you can you know move around. It is fully articulated, by the way. Okay, and the, so the feet, the legs, the neck, the torso, everything about it. It's it's almost like you plucked them out of the game. So I was super impressed by the files in general as I was going through them. Uh, I like the fact that I, what I do see when I when I when I download a, a group of files, what I do look for also is um, uh, how many uh, different panels and how many different settings or not settings. I'm sorry, different uh, items and objects they use to make an an amazing model rather than just a kind of a statue. So that's what I do look for personally. Um, now, what I did is I, as I printed everything that the files were there. Now, some of them are optional. You could probably cover up a lot of these panels that show wiring and in, in um, like the motors and stuff. You could probably just get away with not doing that. But me personally, I like that option. If it's given to me, I'm going to do it. The orientation of all these STL files when I put them on the print bed were absolutely perfect. I didn't need to change anything. All I did was put them on the build plates and send to the printers, okay? They also provided a PDF file with assembly instructions, which were easy, easy, easy. Every file number, every object was numbered, okay? And uh, so you just you just printed everything. You didn't have to mirror anything. You didn't have for a left side, right side. You just printed the numbers, what was provided, the PDF, um, you know, what they did is the set of instructions were very clear and very easy. Most most parts on this thing snapped together. Um, like I said, it's articulated, so there's were a lot. Of, there wasn't a lot of gluing that that needed. Um, at the end of this, when, when I do the dry uh, fit, putting everything together, um, I purposely did not glue everything, so it is very fragile right now. But um, th like I said, the the instructions were amazing, uh, very easy to to do. This droid particularly was a very easy droid. Um, what else? The they provided uh, slicing uh, settings to like recommended settings to use. Okay, so that is the game body files again. I could not be happier with this. Um, as you see, as the prints come out, I could not be happy with the quality and how they fit together. So A plus on game body. That's gonna be a very go to place um, for future builds to go to and 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 <laughs> man, just go nuts with. Let's get on to the filament part.
So I was very excited to get going on the Hobby Lobby filaments because, again, I wanted a place where I knew I can go right down the street, pick up supplies for 3D printing without ordering online and, you know, waiting for that to happen. I could just have it at the, my fingertips. Um, so I was kind of like, OK, let's go. Let's let's, let's do this project. So right off the bat, again, I, I told you guys um, I just did the basic settings. I didn't tweak anything out. I didn't touch anything. I just kind of put it on the printer, uh, loaded it up, and I started printing the files. So I sent the first plate over uh, to the printer, and um, some time in, it, it had a problem. I went and checked on it, and if, sure enough, it had knocked off a piece and started the spaghetti everywhere, and uh, so I just canceled it. Um, you know, and, and sometimes like, these things happen. Uh, it's it's no, not the printer's fault. It's not even the filament's fault uh, at this point, you know, but uh, it's uh, something that I haven't had to deal with with other filaments. So right away, I'm like, okay, let's second guess on how... Uh, what's going on here and uh, so yeah it looked like it wasn't adhering to the plate uh, certain small parts weren't adhering to the plate well enough um, added a brim uh, to fix that problem and it did it fixed it for the first uh, plate again I got those parts off um, so I'm like all right cool rock and roll right let's go and uh, started doing it again and uh, second plate uh, or a second set of um, parts uh, failed miserably uh, again, just just completely failed. But this time it was the tree supports that I was using because there's, in this droid, there's a lot of overhangs and there's a lot of hollow areas where um, I had to add supports on there. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't print. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. Brim necessary for all parts. I don't care how big they are and go with um the structure supports not just the regular auto supports not the tree supports it's better for mechanically part mechanically uh, uh inclined parts like this droid tree supports are very well for organic so i switched over to tree supports or not i mean sorry switched over to standard supports and added a brim on everything and it was fine after that so it took a couple days to print everything. I went through the entire two rolls that I had for the from Hobby Lobby. Um, and I had a little bit like I think it was two and a third rolls the entire project. Um, so put it in price perspective. I paid twelve ninety nine per roll for these uh, the Hobby Lobby filaments. Uh, so, you know, twenty six, twenty seven dollars with tax. And maybe a third of a, another roll, but I didn't go back in with, with uh, Hobby Lobby and get another roll. I just uh, used some hatchbox that I had to fulfill the project itself. Um, the only thing I did not print was the base, and it probably would have added another roll of filament. But anyway, 20 bucks for the files. I would say about $30 in filament, 50 bucks total uh, printing. And um, this isn't with any of the uh, electronics and everything else, which we'll get to. Um, at the end of the video, where I'll explain on what I'm doing. But anyway, 50 bucks for the printing of this. About, I would say, three solid days of printing on and off. Uh, sending things overnight. So you wake up after I was comfortable and confident that the brim was working. And uh, changing the support structure type was working fine. We had our droid to assemble and see where this, um, this, this uh, what project was at. All right, the very first thing I love doing is spreading out all the printed parts so I can see the project uh, before me, not digitally anymore, and to see where everything's at. I can examine the details of everything and kind of get in my head how I'm going to sand and paint everything as I'm, I'm laying this out. Um, I'm going to assemble this uh, droid, uh, basically what's called the dry assemble, right? But I go with uh, along with the instructions, and I'm just going to snap together what I could just to see this thing. Um, it, it it just to see how big the the, the droid is and how how uh, how much work I'm going to need in the uh, in the post production of it. I didn't glue anything because that's on purpose. I wanted to be able to sand and paint everything and then do a final assembly with glue and everything. Uh, it's just easier that way rather than just having a printed droid and then try to attack it um, with uh, the finishing touches and everything. Um, I, I did um, want to mention that you could print this as is and assemble as is as to your preference because um, not that you have to anyway, but this is a fully customizable 
uh, Star Wars droid, meaning it, it could be anything you want. So if you had multicolor printers, you can print uh, the parts as is and piece it together. Um, but what I like to do is finish it like an actual droid. Again, plucked from TV and put it in my arsenal. As you can see, I have a pit droid back there and I have a whole pit droid build and I, this, this is another mini droid that I'm doing um, in my arsenal of droids. Anyway, um, I, I have a ton of panels. I have a ton of things that I'm not putting on and this is a very, very loose um, droid. So the slightest breeze, it falls apart. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was very, very hard to assemble and um, uh, uh, capture footage on it <clears throat> to show you guys. But uh, uh, I hope that uh, the end here is something that, um, as a guide, to see where this is going to go. As to see as a visual, you know, just to get an overall picture of this joint. Again, uh, very fragile as it stands right now. All right, here he is. This is uh, BD-1. Uh, right now, just a dry assemble 3D printed droid. Um, I'm going to get into the post-production of sanding them all, gluing them all together. All those panels, all these, 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 these detailed panels are going to be all nice and shiny and detailed and weather, you know, weathered up and all, all that stuff. I'm going to pick a color scheme, go with them. And I'm um, going to try our first hand at adding le electronics from scratch. I know nothing about wiring, electronics, nothing. Uh, so I'm going to bring you guys on the journey and use this droid for the lights on his eyes. And there's the big panel in the back. So it's uh, to me, it's very daunting. I don't, I don't even know where to start. But um, hopefully I can get soon, you know, get to that video soon, um, right away. As soon as I stop recording, I'm going to disassemble him and I'm going to start, you know, sanding him all down, getting rid of all the print lines. So he's plucked out of the movies, a video game at, um, at this one and uh, presented here along with the pit droid there. They'll be buddies side by side. Um, the paint scheme I'm going with, I don't know yet. And maybe because um, in the game, you can customize them with paint jobs and paint schemes. So the pit droid here was a specific uh paint scheme to go with the starlight digest star wars podcast as our mascot this one here i can go you know just the red and blue from the game or customize them in the same way maybe an imperial bd1 droid i don't know uh maybe you guys have some ideas let me know in the comments i'd appreciate it so much um thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video and let me ramble on this amazing project um End results, game body, STL files are incredible. Incredible, incredible. They have a, an incredible library of files that we got to get to. We got to print and make this room just, just one big, you know, um, <laughs> amazing IP. Uh, all my favorite ones, you know, from Star Wars to Lord of the Rings, everything. Um, my final results on the Hatchbox filament, okay? Um... It's, it's, it, I don't think it's going to be a replacement filament for anything I do. I'm not going to run and stock up on the, the Hobby Lobby filaments. What I would do would be to like, if I needed a couple rolls here and there, if I needed something, um, I don't want to wait for, I'll go down and see what they have. And I will absolutely print with the filament. It's not bad filament whatsoever, but it's not my preferred, the final prod, you know, uh, outcome, you know, no matter my settings on it, it's kind of like not to my standards on if I was going to sell those prints, sanding them and everything. I think it's, it's perfect. I think you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, also they don't provide enough. There's not enough inventory in the stores to kind of, um, in my experience, you know, they only had maybe five rolls of filament in my local hobby lobby. 
So it's not something that I don't know if I can depend on um, have them having a, a complete, you know, uh, stock all the time. Uh, or are they going to drop it too? I don't know. I mean, so far I've seen sales been pretty good all across the board. Are they going to continue that? So it's not something I'm going to replace, but it's something I'll use as a tool. And if I need to run down a store for an emergency roll, not a problem. I'll deal with it. So I think um, STL files, 10 out of 10. I am not kidding about that. Uh, filament, I would give it a good 7, a solid 7 for the for the Hobby Lobby filament. Um, I don't think they're manufacturing themselves. I think they are just taking some other brand and repackaging to their uh brand of hot, uh, filament so if you guys have any ideas on what actual filament they're using let me know also um and um yeah so thank you guys so much like and subscribe and until the next one and i promise you the 88 droid is next as far as like the uh what's happening on that um a lot a lot a lot of heartache on that that when i'm so kind of disappointed in that build but again we're here to bring you all of it the journey, the good and bad. So until the next video, guys, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, um, let's print a BD droid. Let's print more. Let an army of these things. Let's go.